So in this problem, we're asked, does the function satisfy the hypotheses of the mean value theorem on the given interval? So in order for the mean value theorem to be true, our function must be continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. So let's look at these options and see which one applies. So let's look at the first one. Yes, it does not matter if f is continuous or differentiable. Every function satisfies the mean value theorem. So no, this one can't be it because it must be continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open one. So what about this? So let's look at the next one. No, f is not continuous on minus 1 to 1. So this function is continuous because um, all polynomial uh, functions like this are continuous from minus infinity to infinity. So this one can't be true either. Let's look at the third one. No, f is continuous on minus 1 to 1, but not differentiable on minus 1 to 1. So if we do the derivative of this, we'll get 4x plus 5. And so from these values, we could plug in any number, and it would give us a value. When it get, does not exist, so this, is, this one is not true. So let's look at this one. Yes, f is continuous on minus 1 to 1 and differentiable. And so we just talked about that, so this one's going to be it, since it's continuous and it's differentiable. Because polynomials are continuous and differentiable on real numbers. And the last one, there's not enough information, so that one's not true either. So now let's look at the next part. If it, if it satisfies the hypothesis, hypotheses, find all numbers C that satisfy the conclusion of the mean value theorem. So what we want to do to solve this is use this formula. So f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Then we're going to solve for this. Take the derivative of our function, set it equal to this, solve for x, and that's going to be our answer. And I'll show you how to do that. So what is f of b? So this is basically a comma b. So b is going to be 1. So if we plug in 1 into this, we're going to get 2 uh, times 1 squared, which is 1, plus 5, plus 1. So this will become 8. So we have 8 on top. And then we're minusing. And then let's plug in minus 1. So 2 times minus 1 squared is going to be 1. Uh, minus 5, because 5 times minus 1 is minus 5, plus 1. So we have 2 minus 5 plus 1. So minus 3 plus 1 minus 2. So f of b is going to be equal to minus 2. So we have 8 minus negative 2, which is the same as 8 plus 2. That's going to be 10, but what about our bottom? So b is going to be 1. So we have 1 minus our a, which is negative 1. So 1 minus negative 1 is just 2. So we have 5. So what we want to do is take the derivative of our function f of x. And then we're going to set it equal to that number. So 2x squared plus 5x plus 1. Let's take the derivative of it. So f prime of x is going to be equal to 4x. Because the derivative of 2x squared, we move the 2 down, so 4x, and we subtract 1. So it would just become 1. 4x is the same thing as 4x to the 1. The derivative of 5x is just 5, because we just have this to the 1. So it's just the constant out front. And the derivative of a constant is 0. But we don't need to write that. So we have 4x plus 5. We're going to set this equal to the value we just solved for, 5. And so if we subtract 5 from both sides, we're going to get 4x is equal to 0. And then if we divide both sides by 4, we'll get that x equals 0. So what we just solve for is c. We just use the variable x. So in this problem, c is going to be equal to 0. And so these are going to be the answers to this question.